call on Nicola Sturgeon, First Minister of Scotland, to speak to and move the motion of condolence. Your Majesty's Presiding Officer, Members of Parliament, Honoured Guests, it is my solemn duty and my honour to move this motion of condolence on the death of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth. For people across our country, this is a time of profound sorrow. While the nation's grief is for our Queen, the royal families is for their beloved mother, grandmother and great-grandmother. Today, on behalf of the Parliament and people of Scotland, I offer my heartfelt condolences to Your Majesties and to the Duke of Rothsey, the Princess Royal, the Earls of Inverness and Forfar, and to all members of Her Majesty's wider family. When Queen Victoria died in 1901, Arthur Balfour led tributes then in the House of Commons. He commented that the grief of the country was in part because they were marking the end of an epoch, the beginning of which stretches beyond the memory of any individual whom I am now addressing. Those words are just as true for us today. Most of us simply do not remember life without the Queen. When, as Princess Elizabeth, she gave a radio broadcast from South Africa on her 21st birthday, she was addressing an empire that still included India. When she became monarch, Winston Churchill was Prime Minister. In an ever-changing and often turbulent world, Her Majesty has been our constant. She has been the anchor of our nation. Our personal recollections are often intertwined with memories of her reign. I was nine years old when I first saw the Queen. She visited Irvine, my hometown, in July 1979 to open the Magnum Leisure Centre. I was one of hundreds lining the streets with my mum, and by luck we ended up close to her car as it passed by. Nine-year-old me was absolutely convinced I had caught her eye. That nine-year-old girl could not have imagined, more than 35 years later, being in the front passenger seat of another car, this time with the Queen at the wheel, driving through the Balmoral estate. In recent days, other leaders have shared stories from Balmoral of barbecues cooked by Prince Philip as the Queen laid the table. These are memories I treasure too. Special times in what was clearly their happy place. I did, however, experience one rather tense moment at Balmoral. My husband and I were with the Queen before dinner when the drawing room light started to flicker. To my great alarm, he was after all in the presence of Her Majesty, my husband suddenly leapt up and darted across the room. Peter had spotted the cause of the flickering light. One of the Queen's young corgis, a beautiful pup called Sandy, was eating through a lamp switch. <laughs> Thankfully, tragedy was averted and Sandy emerged unscathed, though not before a stern ticking off from his mistress. Just like all my predecessors as First Minister and all Prime Ministers, I deeply valued the time I spent alone with the Queen. Her words of wisdom, counsel and humour will stay in my heart for the rest of my life. However, the memory I cherish most is not from Balmoral or from audiences at Holyrood. It is from 2015 when the Queen opened the Borders Railway. I spent the journey from Edinburgh to Tweedbank with just her and Prince Philip, enjoying the recollections of times spent in Scotland. Now that would have been special on any day that it was also the day the Queen became our longest reigning monarch, allowing me to observe closely how quietly reflective she was about that historic milestone made it so much more so. It was one of the great privileges of my life. What was obvious then, and on every occasion she graced us with her presence, was the Queen's genuine love of Scotland. 
Indeed, her first official visit was here in Scotland when she opened the Aberdeen Sailors' Home in October 1944.